for developing footballers out there, like uh, or anyone like watching this, um, what would be some ways that you can help with that focus and and knowing what's important that you need to uh, dive into at that time in your life? Well, um, probably before we go there, we're talking about um, stress. Um, one of the biggest forms of stress is ruminating, as in so worrying about what's just happened. Um, mm. And the longer we ruminate and the longer we worry, the greater stress response, the greater stress hormones that are released. So if you're going through any stress in your life, and the stress might be related to your sport, it might be related to your life, the ability to actually try and deal with that situation is what's important. You may not actually solve it, but you, but the fact that you've had a crack at solving it means that your mind can move on um, yep. and those stress hormones, um, you know, you know, they basically, you know, they lower, they go, you know, they go lower. Yep. Um, so it's really important. That's why you want to deal with things really quickly. Let's say an athlete, like you said, Sam Mitchell would miss you every day asking questions. Um, would you text him straight back? Would you say, let's catch up for a coffee or, and then, then, then in there you'd be asking the questions or is it just a bit of a, a back and forth, no matter what the format in person over a text, you, you're asking them questions on that topic. Let's say Sam's like, I really want to work on my, improve my sleep quality. Yeah, it could be all, uh, well, all of that. A lot of the time it's a, it, it might be a text to get started with and then it's a mate, come in and see me this afternoon. Let's follow up on it. You know, I'll let's follow up first thing tomorrow morning. So face to face is always better. Um, yeah. I don't like doing it on the phone as much. Um, so even if I do it on the phone, I might just start the conversation on the phone and then say, let's do it tomorrow. You know, let's catch up and go through it because it's much more powerful. Because again, I want to see their body language. I want to get a feel for their facial, you know, their facial features. Are they into this? Are they not? I could be telling them something. And then they're just not with me. And so then I can mm. say, mate, I know you've asked me for this a bit of advice, but for whatever reason, you seem to be off on another page. Let's do it tomorrow. And from a cultural point of view, um, you know, whether it be lead, you know, managing your performance team uh, and also players, coaches, the whole cohort, um, what are some important things when you when you go into a new club that you, that you personally focus on? Yeah, well, I think there's a couple of things. Uh, you have to provide an environment that they feel safe in. And, and, and again, there is a lot out on that. Um, the athletes have to feel safe, but the, but the support staff and the people you're working with have to feel safe. So, again, this whole, you know, you're doing it my way is not the way yeah. to go. It, it's, it's, it, it's the education piece, as in this is how I see it, this is how I view it, what do you think, what are you going to bring to the table? So the alignment of philosophy, basically, and I'm still on that process now. Do you journal stuff at the end of the day, do, you know, or is it a matter of you just through practice you've been able to filter the important stuff and sort of get rid of the stuff that's not relevant? Um, you know, I imagine there's, there's those conversations you're having throughout the whole day. How do you note down what are your, your, your important things to spend time on and things that are less, you know, prioritise? Um. You should see my whiteboard. My whiteboard and my notes and my phone on my notes um, are an absolute shit fight. Like, it just looks... Yeah. You walk in and you think, oh, my God, what is going on in that bloke's brain? Like, there's just shit everywhere all over the board. There's no... It's random. It's So that's just my way. My way is, oh, shit, I've got to remember that. Bang. If, I've, if I'm in my office, I'll write on the whiteboard. If I'm at home, I'll write it in the book. If I've got nothing, I'll put it in my notes on my phone. So in the end, I, I have stuff going everywhere, which is not a great system, but it's just what works for me. So I pretty much know that whatever I've got to do, I'm either in my notes on my phone, my notes in the notebook or my whiteboard, and I just keep swinging between those three and keep reminding me of yeah. what I did, what happened, what strategy. You've been at the top of your game for many years. Um, what do you do to develop your knowledge and how do you find new methods? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I've really struggled with this over the years to find both somewhere, you know, that is a really got strong resource and, and giving other people advice on where to find it. I find it really challenging. Um, I basically, uh, I read a lot. So um, I read a lot of books. Um, I read a lot of research. Um, and people who know me often say that, I'm not 
I'm not a heavy I'm not a heavy research orientated high performance coach. I actually am, but I put the research into into practice. Um, and I try and bring it to life. And so there is a lot of stuff that I do based on research, but I, I don't give the impression that there is that it is. Um, mm-hmm. The art is more important than the science, but you have to have a pretty good understanding of the science to start with. 